Today we are here in Fresno, California at Saints Motorsports. I'm Brandon Zambrano, the owner. I've always had a vision to build a street truck that is different than every other truck on the road. So with that being said, I got a 2017 Chevy Silverado single cab. We've partnered up with Magnuson Supercharger and today we're gonna to be installing one of their 1.9 liter blowers on this Chevy with the 5.3. We're gonna be adding over 110 to 115 horsepower to the rear wheel on this bad boy today. So stay tuned and we're gonna get started and show you the process. The good thing is, is by installing a supercharger on a motor, you're increasing the air that is forced into the motor, which then allows more fuel, which equals more power. Okay, so first we're gonna loosen up the intake tube. The intake on the throttle body. We're gonna remove the factory intake. Then there's going to be four bolts on top of the intake box. We're going to undo these ones. Okay, so it's going to be secure in there. You want to give it a nice little tug so it pops free. Okay, so now what we want to do next is disconnect the ground to the alternator. Remove it, push it back, put the bolt back on it so you don't lose it. Remove the plug going into it. Let's go ahead and remove the plug to the throttle body. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to put a breaker bar on the inside on the pulley to get it loose, to unloosen the belt. Slide the belt off, undo the tensioner. Pull the belt off. And next what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo the alternator brackets. Let's just go ahead and remove those. Let's get the alternator out so we have easier access to the intake manifold. So next what we want to do is we want to take these Christmas trees off the side of the intake manifold all the way down and pop them all loose. We're going to do that on both sides and what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up the evap line down here on the bottom. Okay, so on the back of the intake manifold there are three Christmas tree push pins. You want to get a screwdriver back up in there and pop them loose one by one. Okay, so now just undo this 10 millimeter bolt right here holding the wiring harness on the driver's side. That way we can move the harness over to the side and have easy access to removing the intake manifold. All right, so now that we got all the wires and everything out of the way, we can lift out the intake manifold. Be careful when you're removing it not to drag it across the intake. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to take a shop vac and a vacuum around each intake port. You want to make sure you vacuum out everything so you don't get any debris on the inside of the engine. So now what you want to do is you want to wipe down each port. Okay, now that we got them cleaned, let's go ahead and throw, throw some tape over the top of them so nothing drops inside. Okay, so in the front, we're going to start by removing these push pins. It's gonna be all along the top shroud. Okay, so now that we got all the clips removed, let's go ahead and remove the top, top shroud. Okay, so now that we have the top shroud off, let's go ahead and remove the front grill. So we're gonna unbolt the four bolts going across the top. Okay, so now that you have the bolts off, you're gonna unclip the front of the grill. 
I just usually give a nice little tug once or twice and the grill should just pop right out. Okay, so now let's disassemble and remove the headlights. And we'll unclip it right here where the factory headlight is held in by a clip. Light, reach back here, push down on the factory clip and remove it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the radiator support cross member. First bolt is located right here on the end and put your wrench in there from the back side. Start loosening it up. Second one is located right here. So the third bolt is located down right around this area underneath. Okay, so now that we have it removed, all the bolts removed out of it, let's go ahead and remove it out of the vehicle. Slide it to one side, lift up, and it'll come right out. Right here on the top side, Here's the plug. Let's go ahead and disconnect that. We're gonna push it through. Okay, so now that we have access to our intercooler, we're gonna go ahead and mount these brackets and mount the intercooler inside in front of the radiator. Okay, so now that we have the intercooler installed, let's go ahead and remove the front bumper to allow easy access to run the hard lines for the intercooler on the passenger side underneath the headlight. Okay, so now we're gonna be mounting the hard lines that bolt below the passenger headlight for the intercooler and the pump. Secure that back. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna install the supplied relay pack that runs power to the pump it's going to be powered through the fuse box and we're also going to ground it over here to the factory ground post. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to install the intercooler lines on the back of the blower because once we set it inside the vehicle we will not have access to clamp these clamps. Okay, so now what we're going to do, factory intake manifold, we're going to go ahead and remove these O-rings because we're going to use them on the blower. Okay, so what you want to do when you get them off is wipe them off, get any of the excess grease or oil on them off, so we'll have nice fresh ones on the install of the blower. Okay, so what you want to do after you've cleaned them is go ahead and install them on the blower. Make sure they're pushed in and seated all the way. Go around a couple times. Move on to the next one. Now what we're gonna do is disconnect the throttle body and install it on the blower. So now that we have it off, we're gonna remove this gasket. We're gonna transfer it over to the blower. After you get the gasket secured in there nice and flush, let's go ahead and mount the throttle body. It comes with supplied bolts in the Magnuson kit. Okay, so now we're gonna install the intake air temperature on the bottom of the blower. We're gonna install it finger tight first. Okay, after you get it tightened down, we're gonna go ahead and torque this down to 15 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, now that we've already checked that our hoses are securely clamped, the radiator is securely fastened, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall these bits. and reinstall the cross member in the front. Repeat the process that you did before and install the bolts underneath, three on each side. The 
This is the piece that sits underneath the intake manifold. So we need to do a little trimming on it so it sits flush when we install the blower. So on our diagram, it shows to cut the rear off and a piece off the front. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so now that we have it properly trimmed, we're going to go ahead and set it inside the engine bay so we can install the blower. Okay, so now after we've trimmed it, we're going to set it in place, make sure everything lines up, which it does. Now we're going to go ahead and install the blower. Alright, now that we have the install of the blower, we have the bolt securely fastened. We're gonna go through the order and torque them down. Okay, so be before you install your pulley, put a drop of Loctite on it. Don't want that thing falling off. Line up your holes. Hand tighten first. So what we're doing is we're moving the hose clamp down so we can feed this onto the pump for the intercooler that we mounted down below earlier. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the factory EVAP and we're gonna install our supplied extension hardware that comes in the kit. What we're going to do is we're going to install it on the vehicle using the factory hardware bolts back in, in it. We have that securely fastened. We can plug it in in the back with the EVAP line. Plug that in. Make sure you hear it clip. Hook up the hose on the blower. So this is the supplied wiring harness for the EVAP. So now that we have it, we're gonna install it on the vehicle. And then we'll use a couple zip ties and zip tie it to the wiring harness. Okay, now that we got that secured, let's go ahead and plug in our map sensor on the bottom. Make sure you hear it click in. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the vacuum line and hook it up to the blower like so. Okay, so we're gonna plug in the air temperature sensor underneath the blower. Like so, click that in. Now since we're here, let's go ahead and plug in the throttle body. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall the alternator. Now inside the kit, they're going to give you another pulley and a bolt to install right here. And what we'll do is we're going to undo the bolt right here for the ground on the alternator and hook back up the ground. Make sure it's snug, cover it back up. Let's go ahead and plug in our Okay, so now what we're gonna do is install the intake box back in the vehicle. Push on it till you hear it clip into place. Just like so. I'll go ahead and get this lined up since we're here. Like so. Install our mass airflow sensor. Install the four bolts around the intake box. Okay, now that we've routed the plug from that side to this side, we're going to go ahead and plug it back into the intake. Put the factory one back on that's in there. Clip it in. 
install it up here. Make sure it's pushed in, clip it in. Everything's secured. Now we're ready to install the belt, fill it with some fluid, test this baby out. We're finally here at the end of the install. So now all we need to do is upload the tune in this truck so we can get it out on the road and see how much power it's really gonna put down. Well, you can definitely tell the throttle response, the torque is there, the pickup is there, which I'm sure overall would get you better gas mileage if you keep your foot out of it, but that ain't gonna happen.